Hey everybody, welcome back to Maya Mondays. So on my YouTube channel, recently one of the subscribers asked, how can you take animation data that's being dynamically driven on a spline IK system and have that transferred onto the actual joints? And I think the question came from this little character that I was playing around with earlier, that I had his, his tail dynamically moving. So if we look at the animation here, you can see that there's no kind of bounce in that tail. There's no secondary animation. So instead of hand keyframing that, what I wanted to do is I wanted to use physics to drive that. And this is really easy to do inside of Maya. You just grab the joint, grab the, uh, the end of the chain, go up to bonus tools. Inside of bonus tools and rigging, we have make joints dynamic. And really all this is doing again is creating a spline IK system and then taking the underlying curve of that spline IK system and turning it into an end hair. So you could obviously do this manually. It's just much faster to use this little script that, that was put into bonus tools. So we'll go ahead and we'll create that guy out. And now if we sort of maybe zoom back here and play this back, you'll see that we're gonna get this, you know, this nice little bounce or a hop happening in that tail. So what we wanna do is we want to get that captured in the form of joint rotations, FK, instead of being driven by a dynamic system, probably because the user wanted to get this into a game engine or something like that. And this is really easy to do. Now I know my character's loop is done at 100, and, uh, or done at 30 frames, so by putting my range to 120, we're basically gonna get three cycles there. And I'm gonna isolate my selection to just have the tail and the joints here. You can do that quickly by selecting the objects and hitting control one, which is the toggle hotkey for isolate selection, or there's also a shelf button right here. It's just a little arrow that allows you to quickly jump between isolate select mode. And that was newly added in 2016, the little button here, as well as the hotkey to do that. So we sort of isolated out our selection here. And what we wanna do is we wanna take these joints and we wanna bake that dynamic system onto them. So that's easy to do. You go into animation, go up to key, Go to bake animation, and I'll reset this just to get back to the beginning here. And in this example, I want to select my hierarchy below. So I want to grab all the joints down the chain also. So we'll do that. We'll set to bake on our time, time range. So we'll hit apply. So Maya is going to go through. It's going to bake that animation out. Now that it's done that, if we look in our channel box, you can see that it's gone ahead and on. Let's, uh, sorry, let's not do that. Let's look in our channel box here. You can see if I grab one of these joints that, you know, those rotation values now are obviously updating as, as that tail moves along there. And that's going to happen down each, each, each one of those guys. So to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to say edit, um, delete by type, and I'm going to just get rid of all the static channels so I don't have those, those dummy um, function curves hanging out on all those other attributes. So just the rotational values now are going to, uh, to show up on my, on my tail. So now that we've done that, the next thing that we want to do is just, we don't need that dynamic system in there anymore, right? We've, we've basically captured everything that that was doing in the form of those rotational values or that FK data that's now driving those joints. So now that we've got that done, the next thing that we need to do is make sure that we get a nice loop here. So if we look at frame zero and then we look at frame 120, you can see that there's a little bit of difference between those guys. So we're going to use the animation layers to help us, to help us fix that. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our joint and then I'm going to do an select by hierarchy. So by doing select hierarchy, it picked every joint down that chain. Pretty straightforward. So with those joints selected, I'm going to create a new animation layer and I'm going to create an override layer. So we're going to create an override layer from our current selection. So by doing that, you can see that we now have no keyframe information on this. What I want to do is I want to capture frame zero in this override layer. So all I have to do is hit the S key and I've now set a keyframe of all on down all those joints um, in that animation layer. And you can see as I start to scrub through here, there's no more movement on that layer. Now, if I turn the layer off, obviously that movement comes back. Or if I adjust the weighting of that layer, that movement will start to come back based on how much this, this value set. So what we want to do is we want to use this to transition onto, um, you know, at frame 120, we want that, that value to be set to one. So you can do this a couple ways. You can go over here and you can go to 120 and you can just hit the keyframe button. So we've just keyframed that value at, at a hundred, you know, one a value of one at frame 120. The other way of doing it is to use these little auto key buttons here. This automatically zeroes it out and keyframes it. So this zero and this um, one essentially set a zero weighting key and a, a one value weighting key. So now what we've got is we've got no no override happening for the first I don't know 114 frames or something like that. And then we start to transition onto that recorded value of what would be the same at frame zero. So now if we jump between our first frame, frame zero, and our last frame, 
frame 120, they're exactly the same. So we now have a nice little, little loop in there. So now if we just hit control one to get rid of our view select, you can see that we have this, this nice little animation that's been kind of baked onto those joints. And then we use those animation um, layers to help us just sort of finesse in a little, a nice little loop on that guy. Now, obviously if I wanted to continue to refine this, I could start layering more and more animation layers on top of it to, to keyframe on top of that dynamic system that we've already added. But that's a simple quick run through of how we can do uh, some baking of some dynamic information onto joints inside of Maya 2016. Thanks again for taking the time to watch Maya Mondays. Please click the subscribe button. I really appreciate you guys uh, doing that. Cheers, everybody.